Hello, my name's Angeline and this is Cora and today we're gonna be talking about Brazilian rainbow boa care. I'm going to try to keep her with me throughout this video but she is very adventurous and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep her on my arm this whole time without her going onto something and wrapping around it and not letting me get her off or something of the sorts. So we'll see how long this lasts. I've noticed in the past few years that Brazilian rainbow boas have become very, very popular. Understandably, because they're very, very beautiful. Uh, they have beautiful pattern and colors. And of course, the iridescence they have. I'm not sure, you probably won't be able to see it in this clip, but I'll insert something showing her iridescence. It takes them up to four to six years to become full grown. They are very, very slow growers. She is about three years old right now, and she's definitely not full grown. They can get up to five to seven feet long, <laughs> pretty big. Um, they don't get as thick as a boa constrictor, but they get pretty thick. Females get bigger than males. Cora is a female, so I expect her to become around six feet is my estimate. They give live births, um, unlike some other snakes that, you know, lay eggs. Um, when they are born, they are very small, which is something to keep in mind when seeing them because they're not gonna stay that small forever and not even close. They get very big compared to the size they come out of the womb at. <laughs> when they are born, they are 15 to 20 inches long and pretty thin, like a little shoelace. So you should definitely keep that in mind that if you are gonna commit to this animal, that you have, it's gonna get big and you have to commit to everything that comes with that. So keep that in mind. They come from the Amazon basin and the Guyana shield area of South America. So they come from very tropical foresty areas. In the wild, you'll typically find them burrowed underneath leaves or in the trees because they are semi-arboreal. They're also nocturnal, so don't be concerned if you don't see them at all during the daytime. Um, I only ever see Cora if it's like one in the morning. <laughs> now let's talk about the enclosure. Um, minimum enclosure size, in my opinion, is the full length of the snake. So if your snake is three feet long, at the minimum is to have at least a three foot long enclosure so they could spread out all the way. If you have a seven foot long snake, have a seven foot long enclosure, etc. I believe that bigger is better, always. Um, a lot of people have this misconception that smaller snakes will get stressed if they are in big enclosures, but that is not true as long as you fill out the enclosure with foliage, plants, places to hide, you know, stuff like that. Um, because obviously if you give any snake a really big enclosure that is not filled out nicely, it will become stressed. Um, so always bigger is better. And the enclosure size that I have my Brazilian rainbow boa in is a eight foot long, three feet tall and two feet wide enclosure. It's huge. And I have a whole video out on how I did that. I'll leave the link in my bio, um, but she loves this enclosure. She utilizes the height. I see her climbing up there if I'm up late <laughs> and see her. Um, so she, that is a really good size for her now. And I still probably will give her a bigger enclosure one day when I have my own house and like I can do like construction in my home. Um, but at the moment, this is amazing for her and she loves it. From what we know, they are not social animals and they shouldn't really be kept with other Brazilian rainbow boas or other reptiles or animals um, other than like if you're having a bioactive enclosure with like ice pods, springtails, worms, stuff like that, that's completely different. Some people who are very, very experienced and they have like a whole exhibit for them 
can pull that off. Um, but they're very experienced and it's a very different situation than most of our situations here at home. Um, so don't recommend. Make sure you have a day and night cycle for them because they are nocturnal so they need it to be dark at night so they know it's night and they don't get stressed and have get confused about whether it's day or night. Um, so if you have lights, keep them on 12 hours a day and make sure they turn off and they have complete darkness for the night. Brazilian rainbow boas do not require UVB as a lot of snakes do not but it is always beneficial to give them UVB. It supplies them with vitamin D3 and it supports immune health. And some people say it promotes increased activity in their snakes. So beneficial, can add it if you would like. If you add UVB, I recommend putting it on the warm side of the enclosure because that's where the sun is. So it makes sense that's where the UVB will be. And if your UVB bulb gives off heat, that also makes sense to put it on the warm side. Now let's talk about heat and temperature. Humans, us, we are warm-blooded, which means our bodies can regulate our own body temperatures. Reptiles and Brazilian rainbow boas are cold-blooded, which means that they cannot regulate their own body temperature and they have to like do it manually, like they have to go to certain areas where the temperature is either warmer or cooler depending on what they need. So we need to provide that for them, give them a cool side and a warm side. The cool side of the enclosure's temperature should be 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and here's the Celsius. The temperature for the cool side of the enclosure should be 80 to 88 degrees so you should make sure it stays there. Don't really make it go higher than 88 um, because it's known that Brazilian rainbow boas kind of like cooler temperatures than most boas. Um, so we should not exceed that. Most of the time, my Brazilian rainbow boa likes to be on the cool side of the enclosure, but it's always good to provide them with that warm side. And at nighttime, the temperatures can drop slightly, no lower than 70, I would say. But yeah, it can drop at night because that's how it is in nature and everywhere the temperatures always drop at night. You can achieve this by using a underside heat pad or a heat mat or some kind of heat bulb, or you can use both. Um, right now, I'm transitioning to use both because I noticed my heat pad or heat mat in this enclosure, since it's so big, is not giving the right ambient temperature that I would like, so I'm making that switch right now. So just see what works for you and your enclosure and your Brazilian rainbow boa. Now let's talk about humidity. These snakes are known to not be beginner snakes, mostly because they need such a high humidity requirement, especially as babies, and they can very easily pass away if they become dehydrated and don't have the right humidity levels. So this is very, very important to keep in mind and be very strict with and make sure you're always at the right humidity levels. Babies need such a high humidity, they need 85 to 100% humidity at all times, it should not go below that, um, which is pretty hard to achieve. So that is why a lot of people say they are not beginner snakes, because if you're not acquainted with keeping high humidity, that might be difficult for you and there's not really a lot of room for mistakes. Um, so yeah. Keep that in mind. For adults, they need 75 to 90% humidity. It can go up above like to 100, but it shouldn't stay there for a very long time. Adults and babies need like a drop in the humidity at some point, not lower than what, you know, the requirement is, but it should go to that lower like percentage at some point because it the fluctuation keeps the environment healthy and not like moldy and stuff like that. Also a bioactive enclosure helps keep that environment healthy without mold, especially because springtails eat mold. So my recommendation is to go bioactive if you are keeping a Brazilian rainbow boa. Some tips I have to keep the humidity higher is if you have a 
tank and like a screen lid and you're struggling to keep the humidity high because of the screen lid you can get a like thicker towel and put that over top the screen lid on certain portions you could leave some of the screen lid um, uncovered or you can cover the whole thing uh, depending on how much aid you need but that really helped me when I had a screen lid tank when she was younger um, to keep her humidity up. Moss definitely helps with humidity. As long as you keep it saturated and mist it every day, if you, you keep it dry, it's not going to aid at all. Um, I feel like a lot of people say that, but they don't um, express that's how it does it. So just don't expect to put dry moss in there and never mist it and it'll magically make the humidity higher. <laughs> so mist once or twice a day and make sure there is a dry period in between that isn't like fully dry but it goes to the lower uh, humidity percentage so that the environment can stay healthy. Also another risk if you keep it too wet in there it can make your snake develop scale rot which is not something you want to encounter um, especially that they love to be burrowed you don't want to keep the substrate like dripping wet so keep that in mind if you want to test your substrate to make sure it's not too wet take a handful of it and squeeze it and if it gets like one to two drops out of it and you gotta like really squeeze it that's perfect um it shouldn't go any like get any more wet than that next let's talk about substrate so i see a lot of people using simply coco core or like a peat substrate I don't recommend using those alone because I notice they get very compacted. I feel like at some point it gets hard for them to burrow into. And also I notice it dries out very quickly and when it dries out it gets very dusty and just bad news. I get nervous like she's going to breathe it in or like stuff like that. So I don't recommend that. What I recommend is like an ABG mix or any of the mixes, like tropical mixes from Josh's Frogs or the Bio Dude, or making one yourself. I use Coco Coir, wood chips, sphagnum moss, and charcoal, um, and I get them in the big like lump, and then I take a hammer and I, in like a bag, and I crush them smaller, and then I add them into there to keep the environment healthy and it also gives springtails a nice place to hang out in because they have nice little tiny crevices that they go in so that they don't get like washed away if you like water plants or spray the enclosure a lot. I would also recommend putting cocoa husk like little bits in there. I feel like that would make this even better. I just never got my hands on them but I that's something I have been wanting to add into my mix. And then I put a very thick layer of leaf litter on top. Dave Kaufman did a video um, going and seeing them in the wild and he shows how he finds them and like the environment that they're in. Um, and there was always a very thick layer of leaf litter over the like damp ground and he noticed that they would hide under the leaf litter and like burrow a little bit. So I definitely recommend a thick layer of leaf litter so that they can burrow under it and have more coverage when they burrow and also it helps with humidity as well. It like traps the humidity into the substrate, so definitely recommend. Now let's talk about enrichment. Enrichment is so, so, so important. It is not optional, um, and I really don't see enough enrichment in a lot of people's reptile enclosures, so I cannot stress this enough. Enrichment is super, super important. It is not just like for decor, it is a must for your reptile. It stops them from becoming bored, it keeps them more active, and because it keeps them more active, it, you know, promotes them to have a healthy weight. It promotes natural instincts. And there was a recent study done where they saw that a more enriched enclosure that a reptile was living in became more intelligent than the other that was not in as 
not in a as enriched enclosure and they noticed that the reptile in the more enriched enclosure was able to tell the difference between their owner and other people very important very very important some things you can use as enrichment is different textures different smells stuff like that so cork logs cork flats live plants different live plants that are safe for your animal of course fake plants uh, leaf litter different types of reptile safe leaves to put in there because different smells different textures um, mosses different kinds of mosses different kinds of wood because of the different uh, bark textures and like hides of course about hides uh, you should have two hides that are like fully closed off other than like a certain like a little opening I would recommend on each side of the enclosure so the warm side and the cool side so that they have a hide they can fully stay in that feels really really safe on both sides of the enclosure um, but I don't think that should be like the minimum I still think you should provide hiding spaces within the foliage within like certain areas around the enclosure with branches or cork bark stuff like that all over the enclosure so just basically everything you put in there is enrichment so just doing like the bare minimum of two hides and one fake plant and the rest of it is open is a big no-no okay also a uh, mixed substrate with different stuff in the substrate gives enrichment as well because different textures and smells in that substrate from the different components of it is amazing so keep that all in mind whenever you are making enclosures and how enriched you can make it for your animal now let's talk about cleaning brazilian rainbow boas you know they get big so that means they can produce big poops <laughs> um, as they get bigger so when they're younger a bioactive enclosure can totally you know eat all their poop and it, you don't have to worry about it but as they get bigger you probably will have to take out some poop um, because the microfauna might not be able to handle it all it depends how big of a colony you have in there and stuff like that but if you do not have a bioactive enclosure you have to take all the poop out and spot clean and then every three to four months you have to change out the substrate fully so I definitely recommend bioactive enclosures for Brazilian rainbow boas because of the environment that they come from and the enrichment factor I think that is your best option also they are very visually appealing to you so I definitely recommend it if you can't though that's totally fine as long as you give them as much enrichment as you can um, and make sure they have everything that they need otherwise okay so feeding you should feed a baby and like juvenile uh, Brazilian rainbow boa once every one or two weeks and for adults you should feed them once every two to four weeks as they get larger their metabolism slows down so if you keep feeding them once every week they're gonna become obese so keep that in mind they also are not known to go on feeding strikes which is amazing because that can be very stressful for the owner or I don't like to say owner um the caregiver so that's amazing I Cora has never given me a problem with food um at the beginning when I first took her home she was a little took a little bit longer to take the food than now but she still took it never gave me a problem so yeah, I've heard that they can like go on like a month or two of a feeding strike if it's like mating season. But other than that, not really. So, and that's not even that that common. So, yeah, that is amazing if that's something you are looking for. Main rule of thumb for giving any snake really uh, their size of prey you should measure it by the largest thickness of their body should be the thickness of the prey you're giving them and that's considering that they're not obese the most common prey to give them is mice and rats of course i think that's 
pretty known, but variety is a great thing for most animals when it comes to food. So some of that variety of prey can be quail, chicks, frogs, lizards, soft furred rats, and reptilinks. These are typically harder to find than the common prey items, but you can normally find them at expos and there are certain providers online that you can get them from. It is safest to provide frozen thawed prey because as much as you might think a snake can overpower its prey, they can still fight back. So, you know, they have nails, they have teeth. If, let's say, you just plop the live uh, prey into the enclosure with them and you're not paying attention, and the snake decides it's not really hungry at the moment. There has been instances where, let's say, mice or rats like chew on the spine of the um, snake and the skin there gets messed up and it's a whole thing. So it's safest to provide frozen thawed prey items. You should always feed with tweezers. Uh, like the long ones that you use typically because you know sometimes a snake can strike and miss and accidentally get you. I recommend using tweezers. So for drinking water you should provide them a water bowl that is big enough that they can fit their whole body into or bigger because they do love to swim. Research done in 2006 showed that um, they are actually more closely related to anacondas than other members of the genus. So yeah, they are acquainted with swimming. <laughs> so give them a big water bowl if you can um, because they most likely will utilize it and it will be great enrichment for them. And the water that you give them should be dechlorinated with uh, RepdiSafe or other dechlorinators. RepdiSafe is what I use. Now let's talk about handleability. Brazilian rainbow boas are known for being very docile and I can attest to that. Cora has never bitten me. I've only seen her strike twice. Got her from Jungle Bobs and I saw her strike when I was there getting them because she was stressed. You know, she didn't really know what was going on. She striked at the guy that was, um, what is it called? Um, checking her gender for me. Um, and I saw her strike only one other time at one of my friends, but she was also a baby at the time. She was probably, when I got her, she was a month old and the other time that she striked was probably four months old. So yeah, they're known for being a little feisty as babies, but they're known to calm down very, very quickly. And it makes sense why they would be feisty as babies because being a new tiny little noodle with no arms for defense and only a little mouth with tiny little teeth um, to defend yourself and you know you're tiny compared to these giant tree of humans it makes sense why you would be scared so try to be understanding but yeah they are known to calm down very quickly and when they do they are completely docile Enrichment is a big factor to this so that they can gain intelligence and have the ability to decipher you from other people. Um, and I think that's a big show of what I'm saying here because she's never struck at me because she knows it's me. She knows I feed her. She knows I care for her. Um, she knows I am no threat to her. My friend, on the other hand, that she never met before, so yeah, they are very handleable. Okay, so that's everything I have for this video. I hoped it gave you a little insight on how to care for them. I recommend looking other places than just here for your information to care for them. You have a wonderful day and I hope to see you in my next video.